Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the September 19th, 2017 meeting of the Dallas and City Council. We'll call the meeting to order and we'll begin the meeting as we do each meeting with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman Mayberry is going to offer our invocation and then he will lead us in the pledge. If you'll stand with us, please. Shall we pray? Our most holy and righteous Heavenly Father, once again, we acknowledge what a privilege it is to live in the United States of America, what a privilege it is to live in Galveston, Tennessee. What a privilege it is to serve our reverend Heavenly Father. We thank thee for the beauty of this day. We thank thee, Heavenly Father, for, for our citizens who are watching, those that are here, and, and all of those, Heavenly Father, who make us such a great community. We have people, Heavenly Father, that are undertaking terrible things at the moment, who are just undertaking a terrible act of nature, Heavenly Father, and we ask thee to comfort them, to bless them, to give them the resources necessary to reestablish homes and their, and their work, Heavenly Father. Bless us tonight as we partake of, of the agenda. Give us good sense, Heavenly Father, as we discuss each and every issue at hand. All these things we ask and pray in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Face the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Thank you, Councilman Mayberry. Um, Ms. Kitchell, if you would call the roll for us, please. Vice Mayor Overton. Present. Mr. Camp. Present. Mr. Fennell. Here. Mr. Hayes. Present. Ms. Love. Here. Mr. Mayberry. Here. And Mr. Alexander is absent, but we do have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Kitchell. Um, before you, you have the minutes from the special called City Council meeting on June 13th, 2017 and the June 20th, 2017 City Council meeting. Okay, we have a motion by v Vice Mayor Overton to approve both. Second. And there's a second by Councilman Camp. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions? On the June 13th one, on page two, it says, I think maybe may, possibly the word seconded is left out where it says Councilman Mayberry made motion to approve Councilman Alexander blank. <laughs> so with, with the Council's agreement, we will add in the word seconded. Thank you, Councilwoman Love. Any other corrections, additions, deletions? Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes as amended by Ms. K um, Love, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. Okay, those minutes are approved. 
We do move now to public recognition on agenda related items. This is the time of the meeting that you may come forward and address any item that is on this evening's agenda. We ask that you introduce yourself, give us your address, and this time I will say that public recognition on agenda related items is now open. Okay. I see no one indicating that they wish to speak. Therefore, we will declare public recognition on agenda related items closed and move forward to mayor's comments. And I do have several things for you this evening. You do have in your packet a list of upcoming events. I do want to point out that our final third Thursday on Main, featuring Eric Heatherly, will be the 21st. That's this Thursday at 630. The third annual Sumner County Child Safety Day celebration is at Trivel Creek Pavilion on the 23rd. That's this Saturday from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Also on that day is Relay for Life at Ball State starting at 2. And we'll have another classic car cruise in at City Hall parking lot from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. Next Wednesday, um, I hope you are able to attend. It'll be fun. It's the Monarch in the Park 2017 Butterfly Launch. It's going to be at the Triple Creek Park at the new Pollinator Garden there on the hill back past the pavilion. And this is, an actual, this is actually an effort of Union Elementary. As you all know, David Collins, for a lot of years, has done a butterfly launch at that school. This year, they're busing all those children over to the pavilion. They're actually going to have some education for them, and then they're going to do their Monarch launch out there. So that'll be a fun thing. That's next Wednesday at 9 a.m. The following, I guess it's a couple Saturdays away, but I want it on your calendar on the 7th. The walk across Sumner kickoff ceremony happens at Triple Creek at 8 a.m., followed by the Main Street Festival. And so that's our festival on Gallatin's downtown square. It happens from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. on the 7th of October. I have several recognitions I want to share with you. The first of which is a recognition of the firefighters who participated in the 9-11 stair climb. I want to tell you about the um, firefighters who participated, who actually made the climb on Sunday, the day of the event. It was Ryan Chandler, Chad Lynn, Greg Pack, Ben Sproul, Justin Brannon, Cody Schaus, Matt Stringer, Colton Hahn, Johnny Lamb, Jeremiah Hackard. Um, there was also a group that set up and climbed on Saturday because they were involved with Sunday ceremonies. Those include Donnie Hibden, Caleb Carter, Mario Mendoza, Mike Bruner, Mark Stevens, and Drew Hayden. I also want to tell you that the Honor Guard for the entire event came from the Gallatin Fire Department. And participating in the Honor Guard were Mario Mendoza, Lee Daniels, Kyle Hamill, Mike Bruner, Mark Stevens, and Drew Hayden. And then the coordinators for Gallatin and for the event were Ben West and Dustin Dunn. I think it would be appropriate to give our Gallatin Fire Department participants a round of applause. <laughs> we're very proud of those efforts also have another recognition that I want to share with you, and this is also for the Gallatin Fire Department. And this is a certificate of achievement. It was presented to the Gallatin Fire Department in, in recognition of their exemplary community risk reduction program and their continuing efforts to save lives and property in Tennessee. It was presented the 14th day of September, 2017. And to give you a little bit of detail on that, the community risk reduction initiatives were spearheaded by Elizabeth Bedarsik, um, last year, she performed a CRR, Community Risk Reduction Assessment. The assessment identified fire risk in Gallatin, and from this assessment, the fire department was able to focus the fire prevention programs on the areas and the people who needed it most. The assessment included at-risk areas and at-risk populations most likely to experience a fire, as well as those more likely to succumb to the effects of the fire. Um, fire Inspector Benarsik initiated the following initiatives and was recognized by the State Fire Marshal's Office for her efforts along with efforts of the Gallatin Fire Department. She helped began a life safety prevention program for senior adults who are considered most at risk in our community. She also helped start cooking safety classes for residents because cooking is the number one cause of residential fires in our city. And she helped the department begin a program of supplying and installing smoke detectors throughout the city. So again, I think it's appropriate to recognize our Fire Inspector Elizabeth Bednarsik and our entire Gallatin Fire Department for all the efforts that they have made in reducing fire risk in our city. They deserve some. <laughs> at this time, I have two presentations, two proclamations I'd like to present down at the podium. And I would ask first if those representing Holiday Fest would come forward and join me at the podium.
I know you've seen this couple before, David and Linda Evgen, and um, certainly the uh, most enthusiastic organizers of Holiday Fest each year, and I'm proud to present this proclamation to them. Now I'll read it to you now. It says, whereas the city of Gallatin, Tennessee proclaims that the holiday season will begin in Gallatin on October 1st, 2017, and whereas Holiday Fest, a Sumner County holiday tradition, was established in 2007 and is celebrating its 11th year anniversary this season, and whereas Holiday Fest events honor the season as well as community, creativity, literacy, charity, and tradition, and encompasses many opportunities for residents to enjoy the true spirit of the season, and whereas in Gallatin, the county seat of Sumner County, Holiday Fest will be a time when all citizens can enjoy the Christmas season with many festivities, including Tinsel and Treasures Holiday Open House, Garlands and Glitter Fashion Show, Merry Mantles at Rosemont, the Children's Enchanted Ball at Rosemont, the Academy Arts Christmas Show, the annual Christmas Tree Lighting, Breakfast with Santa, St. Nicholas Ball, the annual Christmas Parade, the Music City Bronze Christmas Concert, Tuba Christmas, and Reese Across America. Are you attending all of those? <laughs> Are you? Oh, wow. Now, therefore, I, Paige Brown, Mayor of Gallatin, do hereby declare the 2017-2018 Holiday Fest season to be in effect until January 31st, 2018. Encourage all citizens to participate in these special holiday events. So, Linda, thank you so much for your efforts. We certainly do have a fabulous holiday season here in Gallatin, and we're thankful for your role in that and the role of all the nonprofits, individuals, and organizations that help make it such a wonderful season here. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank everybody and let you know that all of the events in the area in Sumner County benefit the Sumner County Charities. Last year, with the cumulative uh, uh, amount, we were able to give 85 thousand dollars to the charities of Sumner County. So thank you. All. Thank you so much, Linda. So it's not just fun for our community, it's certainly worthwhile for some very important organizations here. At this time I'd like to ask the representatives of Sumner County Goes Gold to join me here at the podium. Folks, we have some very special families joining us up here right now. And, oh, thank you so much. Did you want to give them one, too? Thank you. We'll get you guys some later. Okay, and I don't know if any of you all want to speak, but you're certainly welcome to. I'd like you to introduce yourself at the very least. We can do that after I read the proclamation. Okay, we'll do that first. All right, this is a proclamation. This is very special. It's the first time we've done this, so be ready. This says, whereas childhood cancer affects more than 15,000 of our country's young people each year, and in 2017 alone, it's reported that 10,000 new cases are expected to occur in children ages 15 and younger, and whereas, while the causes of childhood cancer are largely unknown, advances in medical, medical treatment have increased the overall five-year survival rate to approximately 80 percent, giving our young people a better chance of long and successful lives. And whereas, throughout the month of September, Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, we recognize the children and families whose lives have been forever altered by childhood cancer, as well as the dedicated professionals, organizations, and individuals within the community who support and care for them. And whereas in Sumner County, the local community wishes to bring awareness of childhood cancer through a special initiative to educate and support families in the area struggling with these difficult diseases. Now, therefore, I, Paige Brown, Mayor of Gallatin, do hereby declare the month of September as Sumner County Goes Gold Month and encourage all citizens to learn more about childhood cancer and to support future efforts that keep quality, affordable care accessible to those affected and continued research crucial in fighting the battle against childhood cancer. So, folks, we have the most special group of people here. We have some very, very brave young people, and we have their families. And I know you guys are all um, um, probably some of the strongest people any of us will ever know. So thank you for taking time out of your already busy lives to help bring this important 
effort to the attention of our Gallatin residents and our Sumner County residents. Know that what you're doing does matter and those of you who those of you who are seeing doctors a lot and having special treatments, I admire you more than I could possibly say. So we look forward to seeing you back soon and hope everything goes well as you move forward. But I want you to introduce yourself. Does anybody want to do that? So I'm Carrie Russell. Um, this is Brooks Russell. Um, we've been on our journey for about five and a half years now. He has two younger sisters and a dad at home, but they're playing softball right now, so that's why they're not here. Aww. Uh, I'm Christy Montalbano. Um, this is our son, Mitchell. Um, uh, three years ago, he was diagnosed with leukemia, um, and Brooks and he have fought um, their battles together for the last three years. Um, we're, you know, we would not want anybody to have to do this, but we're very thankful that they have each other. Um, and there are also 18 other families in Sumner County who are currently um, have children in treatment for some form of pediatric cancer. Uh, so that's when Carrie and I and another mother at our church whose daughter was just diagnosed <coughs> with a brain tumor as well um, said, you know, we've we've got to get the word out to the to the people. You know, with this is bigger than just our church with the three. Um, and that's how we met this precious family right here. Um, so would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Um, my name is Wanda Judkins, and this is Jenna Judkins. She's seven, and she was diagnosed in June of this year with osteosarcoma, a very rare pediatric bone cancer. So she is currently in treatment, just had surgery a couple of, uh, this past Monday, and we have more rounds of chemo to go, but hopefully there's an end in sight soon. So we have a picture made together. And before Kim goes too far, people can show support for this by putting gold bows on their mailboxes. Is that right? Perfect. Okay, so I'll repeat what y'all just told me. To show support for Sumner County Goes Gold, you can make a gold bow and put it on your mailbox, or, or and you may attend an event this weekend at godwide.com from 1230 until 2, and that's going to be just a fun event if you'd like to go out and support this effort and show your support for these families. So thank you all for being here. With that, I think we conclude Mayor's comments and move into the regular agenda. The first three items on the agenda this evening are um, some dangerous building show cause hearings. So I will start with item number one, which is 403 Book Brooks Drive and dangerous building show cause hearing with Chuck Stewart, our building official, and Susan Heimacali, our city attorney. And I just want to remind all the council people, I think you've probably all been through a dangerous building hearing before, but just to remind you what we're doing tonight 
uh, Mr. Stewart's going to present testimony on some buildings that he, as the our codes official, has deemed dangerous. And you're going to listen to that testimony and make a determination of whether or not these buildings are in fact dangerous and unfit for human occupation. If after all the testimony that you hear, you determine that they are dangerous and unfit for human occupation, um, then you should make a motion to declare the building dangerous and you will have to issue findings of fact that are based on the testimony tonight. So your motion will need to include, if you so uh, determine, that the, dip, the building is dangerous and unfit for human occupation or use based upon the testimony presented and authorize an order setting out findings of fact based upon the testimony. So we'll get started now um, with the hearing and I'm just going to have you introduce yourself for the record. State your name and title, please. I'm Chuck Stewart. I'm the building official for the city of Gallatin. And what's the address of the first property? The first show calls uh, hearing we're going to address tonight on a dangerous building is 403 Brooks Drive. Okay. This, uh, the owner of this building is, is, is Mr. Henry Humphrey. This afternoon we received a uh, phone call from a Dorothy Humphrey who said she could not be here tonight to represent uh, Mr. Humphrey, and she stated us that he was living with her, but she had a family medical emergency. So I'd like to ask this uh, mayor and this well-dressed council how you'd like to handle this. Would you like to delay it? Did she give any indication that they're gonna do anything to this building? Because, I mean, it looks pretty rough. Now, I mean, this building has been, been this way since I arrived in Gallatin. Uh, yeah. The building burned. There's not much left to the structure. If you look at the <coughs> pictures, the yard is uh, in pretty bad shape. Uh, it, uh, the building's not much holding it up. I think that the building, personally myself, is time for it to go. And I don't believe uh, that uh, they're gonna do anything with it. That's my personal opinion. We have tried for uh, two years now to contact uh, Mr. Humphrey and have been unsuccessful. Today was the first time we had a phone call or anything that said that he was still alive even. So uh, I, would just, I would ask this council what you would like me to do with this one. Sorry, I, di I didn't hear what you said. A motion to proceed. Okay, so is there a second to that motion to proceed with his hearing? Second. Okay. Opposed, please say no. 403 Brooks Alley is in such disrepair, it's hard to give you a, a, a line on what's wrong with it because it burned. Uh, not much roof left, uh, floors falling through in it, it's got rodents, so it's a uninhabitable building and uh, in my personal opinion and professional opinion is this building could not be brought back, could not be restored. Okay. Send it on. Okay, let's get just a little bit more testimony. Um, Mr. Stewart, if you'll just give a little bit more history on, on this particular property with Mr. Humphrey, he did accept service of pro he did accept certified mail, correct, and signed for it. Yes, uh, we had a uh, our certified mail. You let me dig through this for a second here. I got such big packages on these buildings. Uh, we started this process back in uh, 2014. Uh, we did uh, send the certified mail out and. He did accept, and on uh, June the 22nd of this year, uh, of 2017, a site inspection was performed once again by us and uh, the fire department, the fire prevention division, and uh, found that uh, the building is, is still in the same state of disrepair it was when we first uh, went to the building. Uh, we have no other contact. I talked to Councilman uh, Alexander at one time about Mr. Humphrey, and uh, he assisted me in trying to locate him, and we were not able to locate him then. Uh, we have since had a building in the neighborhood removed by the church there. It, it's taking it down, and it's on in, in the same general area there. Uh, to give you more history on this building, it's hard to give you a lot of history when we can't talk to the people on it. Because we um, weren't certain of his location, this one was 
put an ad was put in the paper and it was published for two consecutive weeks is that correct that's correct it was published for two consecutive weeks and then we allowed 30 days for some some action back on the uh, ad that went in the newspaper and can you just give them a little bit of um, testimony about i know you said the house had burned but all of trash debris uh in the yard in the house uh it's in a complete state of disrepair and uh unsanitary conditions there and based on your professional opinion is this a dangerous building that's unfit for human occupation and use it's definitely unsafe for human uh, uh, habitation or for anyone just to enter it uh, being nosy looking around they could get hurt very badly in that in that situation and in your opinion it cannot be repaired correct no ma'am it cannot be repaired and so what is what is your recommendation for this council my recommendation is council is to uh, have this house removed I like to move make a motion that we file upon that and have the house removed okay we've had a motion to have the house removed to have it demolished and uh removed is there a second i'll second okay. all right there's a second i'll i have one question okay now that now that, that he's been found mr humphrey's been found will he have any time at all to move it out their cell chuck if they contact you will you give me any time to move it out their no. cell well, that's based on what you determine. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I, I can't give you a legitimate answer for that question. Uh, we've been trying for a couple of years to even find him. Yeah, but now that, uh, and I, I think Mr. Alexander might could answer this question for us if he thinks that that that, uh, that he would do anything with that building. I don't think, it, with his his health, I don't think he can do anything. Uh, maybe some of his family members might could do something. But this is the ongoing thing that's been going on for at least about two years. Huh? Okay. That's, this is in my district, and I'm okay. really trying to clean up the district. Okay. And uh, good with we'll it. give them ample yeah. time. Susan, if we clean the property up, then we, for our services rendered, do we put a lien on it against the property for? Well, if you recall, um, when we amended our code this year, we um, have a, we are now going by the state statute, so there's an automatic mm -hmm. lien because we're following the state procedures. So there will be a lien on the property. No further. Okay, so there's been a, a motion um, to have the house demolished. Is there within a certain period of time or you probably need to give Mr. Stewart a little bit more. How, how long would it take the city to get to the point that they have they can get it on their schedule to demolish? Uh, that's something I have to ask uh, Mr. Wilkinson back here. Mr. Wilkinson, do you have a? I mean, if it's priority, we can get it within the next month. Within the next or month. I was just thinking if it's going to take you a month to get to it, we could give them 30 days to do it on their own. Since let's, it's let's give them, let's just say 60 days. All right. Let's do it. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay, so we have a motion to give them. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Hayes, second by Vice Mayor Overton to give the property under 60 days to demolish the property and clear entirely clear the property if it is not done by that time the city will do it at um, which point a lien will be placed on the property is there any further discussion on that no. okay all in favor please say aye. aye opposed please say no it does pass unanimously we move on to 411 Brooks Drive another dangerous building show cause hearing 411 Brooks Drive is uh, a property owned by uh, a lady by the name is Louise Hines uh, Ms. Hines has responded she is she is uh accepting the uh certified mail that we have sent her uh this house is in not the same shape as the 403 but it is an unsafe building unsanitary uh the interior of the house is falling uh in disarray uh drywall paint all going away the structure deteriorating rapidly now because a tree has hit, has hit the roof and water is pouring into it. Uh, the roof, in my estimation, is 80% destroyed. Uh, the floor is starting to give way in it. It's uh, unsuitable for habitation, and it's a uh, uh, deteriorating quickly on us over there. Most to proceed. And on on this one, did Miss Hines accept? the certificate of yes, service. Yes, Ms. Hines accepted the certificate. Ms. Hines made a statement. She came to the office and she made a statement that she was not going to do uh, anything with the building. 
she said due to lack of funds that she was not going to uh, and I got a date on that when she was in the building with and, us. And are we certain that she's not here this evening nor a representative? Is there someone here with this property this evening? Just to leave that there. She was in there March of 16. Ms. Hines, oh, I know that you're here, and I'll let you go. Okay, go ahead. I was just going to ask Ms. Hines if there was anything you wanted to say. I mean, are, uh, do you do you agree that? I'll get, I agree that I get someone to tear it down because I don't know how much y'all can tear, tear it down. Ms. Hines' question to us is, "What would the city charge to tear it down?" And I, I don't have an idea on that. So mm -hmm. that's something that uh, Zach would have to determine yeah. uh, versus her hiring someone. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have an answer until they actually went in to do an estimate for the job, and um, I mean, typically the city is not in the business of giving estimates before they, you know, do work that they're required to do because it hasn't been maintained by the property owner. Um, <coughs> would I mean I don't want to get in in the middle of what the recommendation may be, but would be the, this council be amenable to be doing what you did with the previous property and give her 60 days to um, take care of it herself I mean at that at which point you know maybe mr. Wilkinson could give you some idea of what might possibly be the amount of a lien that we would place on your property it's not really it's not <laughs> you do understand that if the city goes out and cleans your property up there will be a lien placed on your property for uh, the amount that it took for the city to clean that property up. I want to make sure that you understand that. But you don't know how much. No, no ma'am, we don't know how much yet. But that's no. what I think what the mayor is suggesting is that um, if the council is amenable, give you 60 days to do it yourself. And during that time, we can potentially get an estimate for you to let you know about how much that would cost if the city were to do it. I, I can't yeah. hear. I'm sorry. She wants 60 days to tear it down. Yeah, I, I think if you would like to. The next one is not until. Is there a motion? Yeah, well, I, I was trying to. Go ahead, Jim. I, I was just trying to let Miss Miss Louise, Miss Louise, if if we uh, allow you 60 days to try to get you to. Get someone to tear down. If not, then the city would come in and tear down. Which I don't know what it would be. Sixty days, two months. Sixty days is uh, agreeable. Okay, I make a motion that we give us sixty days. Second. Okay, motion by Councilman Alexander, second by Vice Mayor Overton, that the property owner has sixty days to clear the property herself if not at which point the city will then clear that lot and place the lien on the property is there any further discussion all in favor please say aye uh, opposed please say no that's passed unanimously and we move on to 549 small street okay. 549 small street also uh, belongs to uh Ms. Hines. And this this one is a little different okay this this property here Ms. Susan, you have to help me exactly what they call this. It's a life estate? That's correct. Ms. Hines has a life estate um, that she will have that, this property for her life. And then after her life, according to a prior will, her, the interest in the property goes to several other people. And then you have the names of those people, Mr. Stewart, with I you. I do. Uh, Yeah, it's, it, it, we have the complaint in, yeah. in the packet. Uh, I have this, uh, the names are uh, a, a, a Hovey Gurley, Jr., uh, Sherelle Thomas, a Ruth Ann Carter, a Mary Dean Gurley, 
a Doris L. Barton, a Herbert Gurley, Ann Servant, Leslie Gurley, and Will Henry Blackmore. Now, these are listed here. Two, three people are dead on there. Is there a Mr. Smooth that was involved in them? Are any of those people here tonight, Ms. Hines or Mr. Stewart? Do you know? One of them's back here. Mr. Smooth. Did you want to get up here and make that statement that you just made to me? <laughs> the way the last will and testimony is, the house belongs to me. I've been paying taxes on it for 23 years. Nobody paid taxes but me. That's right, because you have a life estate. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have the but, life estate. But, don't I have a right? You have the life estate, and then they have the remainder interest. So upon your death, it will pass not, to these other right. people that are listed. I don't know if any of you want to come forward. If, if you have an interest in this property, if you want to come forward and, and uh, give any testimony. No. See, a lien on that property would never affect you. Mm. Potentially, potentially. Oh, potentially. Mm -hmm. okay. If she sold it, it would. Yeah. But she can't sell it. She just likes to stay there, right? <laughs> okay. I'm going to get more complicated. Right. Right. So, so you want recommendation? Well, we need to get testimony on it before there's any. I, I can't give you a recommendation. Um, we need to hear testimony about the actual house and whether or not. And I do want Mr. Stewart to explain, um, because there are other people that have an interest in this property, how we tried to get notice to everyone that has an interest in the property. Okay, on this particular property, this Would you raise your mic property, up, Mr. Sorry. Stewart? Raise your mic. There you go. The, the status of this property is similar to the, to the previous property. It also is an unsafe building. It, it has the same issues on the interior and the exterior, the roof has had a burn place in there, which we have lost some rap some broken and uh, damaged uh, uh, rafters in there, uh, rodents, uh, the eaves are broken, overhanging. Uh, it, my, in my professional opinion, this house could not be repaired for the cost of what the house it is there. We, we do an assessment, what the value of the house is, what this, the assessment would be to come back. We would write this house as, as non-repairable. It's not suitable for anyone to live in. We sent the uh, letters out to each one I listed earlier. Two of the uh, of the listed signed and accepted the letter uh, that we sent on the on on the building. Uh, I asked uh, as we hear about this uh, Mr. Small that contacted us a year ago. This man right here. Mm -hmm. She just went. Okay, Herbert Gurley. He's sitting back there. Is here? Mm -hmm. This girl right here is deceased. Barton? Oh, Doris Burton. Doris Burton is deceased. It would pass to their ears. We don't, it doesn't matter. We just right now need to yeah. probably just speak with the heirs that are here yeah. and get testimony about the house yeah. because this, if, if the house. council determines yeah. that it's a dangerous building and we demolish the house and there's a lien, it will most likely affect the heirs. Would you like to come speak with the council? Are there, any, are there any of the heirs to this property that wish to come forward and speak? If, now, if so, now would be the time. Okay, no. I don't see any indicating they wish to speak. Okay, so Mr. Stewart, if you would um, just give council some facts about the house and your opinion as to what your recommendation is okay as I, as I was saying this house is, is uh, also one that is uh, deteriorating rapidly anytime we lose a roof we start getting water in they go quick especially as old as they are it is uh, in my opinion that it's not feasible to try to repair or restore because of the amount of work it would take and the amount of uh, investment you put back in I recommend this house be uh, demolished also Susan, I'm gonna make a motion that we give these 90 days on this house, and that way she has two houses. If she wants to tear both of them down herself, she'll have time. She'll have 60 on one and 90 on the other one. So that'll give them time. So my, my motion be for 90 days. 
a motion by Vice Mayor Overton, a second by Councilman Hayes. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of giving the property under 90 days to clear the property herself. If at such time it is not done, the city will then do it and place a lien on the property. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Hines. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. I'd like to say one more thing to okay. Council. I, I, I think, you know, we appreciate uh, Officer Jessica, Jessica Jackson. She has got really good at finding people for us. And when it comes to us for a dangerous building, trying to locate the owners is one of the biggest challenges we go through. So Officer Jackson doing a good job over there. You need to thank her when you see her. Thank you. Okay, we move now to item number four. This is second reading. Oh, wait, I have one thing. Um, Councilman Alexander asked me if we could move up item number 13 because he's going to have to leave the meeting early. So is the council okay with us going ahead with item number 13 at this time? Is a first reading? Somebody nod, give me a yay, no. Okay, I see no objection. So this will be first reading on ordinance number 01709-77 and I'm recognizing Councilman Alexander. Thank you, Mayor. This first reading on ordinance number uh, 01709-77 order appropriating $25,000 donation from the Tennessee Valley Authority to the Gallatin Economic Development Agency, and I so move. Second. Motion by Councilman Alexander, second by Councilman Hayes. Is there any discussion? Seeing no one indicating they wish to discuss, this is first reading on ordinance number 01709-77. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? It does pass unanimously. Now we'll go back to item number four. And it is second reading on ordinance number 01708-66. Some Councilman Hayes will be recognized. Yeah, this is an ordinance of the city of Gallatin, Tennessee, approving an amendment to the preliminary master development plan for Hunter Point on two parcels and a portion of a parcel totaling 19.38 acres, authorizing the revision to be indicated on the official zoning atlas, repealing conflicting ordinances and providing for severability and providing for an effective date. This second reading motion to approve. Okay, motion by Councilman Hayes, second by Vice Mayor Overton. Opens the floor for discussion. Is there any? Okay, I'm going to comment again that I have grave concerns about this and have heard from a lot of people on this and um, just wish that you would um, feel differently about it than you seem to feel. I think this is a you know, bad place and a bad change to a master development plan and it's going to impact that area fairly negatively um, with traffic and um, overall our infrastructure with new traffic because that's another large number of high density apartments coming in our community and right now we're sitting at a position where we're adding about 30% of the existing units that we already have in the city. We're increasing our housing by 30% and this is an opportunity to not contribute to that. That's my comment. Anyone else wish to say anything? Okay. This is second reading on ordinance number 01708-66. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? No. Okay, I have six voting in favor. Councilman Love voting against. It passes six to one. Item number five is second reading on ordinance number 01708-68. Councilman Camp is recognized. Thank you, Mayor. This is an order for the City of Gallatin, Sumner County, Tennessee, resulting 5.7 acres plus or minus uh, acre parcel uh, from A Agricultural Residential District, a specific plan district, and approving a preliminary master plan development plan for Union Properties LLC located 400 Alderman Vid Road. So moved. A motion by Councilman Camp, second by Councilman Alexander. Opens the floor for discussion. Is there any? Okay, seeing no one wishing to discuss, this is second reading on ordinance number 01708-68. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? It does pass unanimously. Item number six is second reading on amended ordinance 01709-70 and Councilman Alexander is recognized. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, this is second reading on ordinance 01709-70 or it's appropriating $398,255,000 for the purchase of a fire rescue truck, and I so move. Second. Motion by Councilman Alexander, second by Councilman, Councilman Fennell. Is there any discussion? 
This is second reading on amended ordinance number 01709-70. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, say no. It passes unanimously. Item seven is second reading on ordinance number 01709-71. Vice Mayor Overton. Thanks, Mayor. This ordinance, Article Three, Section One, City of Galton, Tennessee Charter, uh, Galton, Tennessee Charter, as established in 19 in Charter 67, the Private Act of 1953, and as amended thereafter to establish term limits for the office of mayor, district alderman, and alderman at large. I so move. Okay, motion by Vice Mayor Overton. Second, Second by Councilman Fennell. Is there any discussion? I'm just going to say that what I've said previously, That's which fine. is that I believe that the people have the right to decide that, and that I in, I appreciate comments of people on the um, on this council who have been here for several years and know the history of several votes. Okay, and for those who think they have heard this before, you have. It has been brought back again this year because we need to be specific about the election that it would be voted upon in. So that's why this is sounding familiar to some people. Any other comments this evening? Okay, this is second reading of ordinance number 01709-71. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. Aye. Okay, it does pass three to two. No, four to two, I'm sorry, four to two. My math is not good tonight. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, item number eight is first reading on ordinance number 01709-72, Councilwoman Love. Thank you, Mayor. This is an ordinance of the City of Gallatin rezoning a 23.40 plus or minus acre parcel po uh, portion of SBE tax map 114 parcel 046.01 from the OR office residential district to the MRO multiple residential and office district and approving a preliminary master development plan for Long Hollow Baptist Church, authorizing the revision to be indicated on the official zoning atlas, repealing conflicting ordinances, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. And I so move. Okay, motion by Councilwoman Love. Yeah. Second by Vice Mayor Overton. Is there any discussion? This is first reading on ordinance number 01709-72. All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Aye. It does pass unanimously. Item nine is first reading on ordinance number 01709-73. Vice Mayor Overton. Thank you, Mayor. This ordinance awarding the bid uh, and authorizing funds in a total amount of Two million six hundred thousand dollars from wastewater 2015 bond sales for Bulls Creek pump station improvements contract, and I so move. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Overton, second by Councilman Hayes. Is there any discussion? This is first reading of Ordinance Number 01709-73. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Passes unanimously. Item 10 is first reading on Ordinance Number 01709. Dash 74, and again, Vice Mayor Overton. Thank you, Mayor. That's uh, ordinance awarding bid, authorizing funds in a total amount of $2,835,000 from water and sewer, 2015 bond fund sales for water and sewer reserves for Bulls Creek, force main improvements contract 216-2017. Now so move. Motion by Vice Mayor Overton. Second. Second by Councilman Fennell. Is there any discussion? Okay, we're voting on first reading on ordinance number 01709-74. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Item 11 is first reading on ordinance number 01709-75. Councilman Fennell is recognized. Thank you, Mayor. This is an ordinance appropriating funds for 2016-2017 carryover capital project. Looking through my notes right here, this is for $217,000 to uh, complete for the park maintenance barn. I so move. Okay, motion by Councilman Fennell. I think the second was Vice Mayor Overton. Okay, any discussion? All in favor of first reading, uh, uh, first reading ordinance number 01709-75, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Item 12 is first reading on ordinance number 01709 uh, 76, Councilman Mayberry. This is an ordinance appropriating $191,950 for a State of Tennessee Economic Development Site uh, grant. 
where as the composition of that is coming uh, from. Uh, 95,975 is coming from a state economic development grant and with $95,975 coming from the EDA designated fund balance. Most approved. Second. Motion by Councilman Mayberry, second by Councilman Fennell. Is there any discussion? This is ordinance number 01709-76. All in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed say no. Passes unanimously. We've already done item number 13, so we're going to item 14, which is first reading on ordinance number 01709-78 and Councilman Hayes. Yes, this is an ordinance appropriating 7,500 donation from the Tennessee Valley Authority to Gallatin Economic Development, C Development Agency. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Councilman Hayes, second by Councilwoman Love. Is there any discussion? This is first reading on ordinance number 01709-78. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. It passes quietly, but unanimously. I was the only one that voted. Huh? I was the only one that voted. I know. <laughs> I guess my vote means quietly. something. Yeah, I heard, I heard a little peep over here and a little peep over here, but no, no. So I'm going to say it passes unanimously. Item 15 is first reading on ordinance number 01709-79. Councilwoman Love. Thank you, Mayor. This ordinance appropriates $7,500 for the first annual Firefighters Recognition Banquet, and I so move. Second. Okay, motion by Councilwoman Love, second by Vice Mayor Overton. Is there any discussion? I will disclose that my son is a fireman, but I'm sure they will all enjoy this. <laughs> first. No, no. I'm, I'm. I was just curious. I know that the donations was asked for this fireman's ball. What kind of money did you uh, collect? Seventy-five hundred dollars. <laughs> okay, I got you. That's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. So, anyone else? All right. This is first reading on ordinance number zero one seven zero nine dash seventy nine. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. <coughs> And I would certainly extend our appreciation for those businesses that do support this effort in our community. I know it means a lot to our fire department. Um, item number 16 is first reading on ordinance number 01709-80, Councilman Camp. Thank you, Mayor. This is an ordinance amending the Gallatin Municipal Code, Chapter 13, Article 3, Pension Trust Plan uh, Fund, where we're expanding the thing from one representative from the Finance Department two representatives from the city council and two employee representatives. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilman Camp, second by Vice Mayor Overton. Any discussion? Okay, this is first reading on ordinance number 01709-80. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. It passes unanimously. And item number 17 is resolution R1709-49, Councilman Fennell. This is a resolution authorizing the city of Gallatin to participate participate in the TMA Risk Management Pool Safety Partners Loss Control Matching Grant Program. I so move. Second. Okay, motion by Councilman Fennell, second by Councilwoman Love. Is there any discussion? This is <coughs> resolution R1709-49. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. It does pass <laughs> unanimously. Y'all are very, very quiet tonight. We're always quiet, Mayor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Oh. Um, oh, did you want me to go slower? <laughs> okay, that concludes our regular agenda and it does move us forward to other business. So if there's any other business to come before the council or that the council has, now would be your time to do that. And I see Vice Mayor Overton indicating he has some. Mayor, can you or Chief uh, Williams one give us an update on our new fire station? Where we're going to break ground, what's going to happen with it? It's gone to bid. It's out for bid right now yeah. or it's going out for bid next week? It's last going to be every day. out for bid on next Thursday. And um, once it goes out, it'll be out for 21 days. And we hope shortly after that time when we get the information back, we can select a GC and then go ahead and start the process of breaking ground. Again, it's going to depend on weather as we go into the winter. Not really sure how the weather is going to play on that, but it sounds like it'll be after the first of the year. Sounds like it most likely will be after the first of the year, unless we have a really, really mild winter. But, but I will, um, for this council's information, I think it's important for you all to know 
that they've done a lot of due diligence moving towards the building process or the bidding process because mm -hmm. they worked with the building maintenance department and I think they may have made what 53 changes to the plan or something 53 like that. 53 original and then 10 additional okay. and we've met three times and now we're we're hopeful that when the plans come back uh, this week that everything will be in order for us so and the goal from that is um hard learned uh, the goal is because of what we've learned the hard way on other mm -hmm. projects and the goal is to have no change orders as That's we right. move forward so well <laughs> but it's but it's going to make us a lot better on the back end when we're not mm -hmm. having change orders all over the place and save us a lot of money mm -hmm. may i have a question uh, chief right. uh, chief if we since the fire station is moving right along and we're glad of it have you determined how many additional personnel you are going to need to hire that are not already employed now to 15. staff this, this 15. Facility? 15. Yes, sir. 15 new ones. Any of that in this 17, 18 budget? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. It'll be in the following budget. We're going to hopefully secure a safer grant. That's what we're going to be going after. But if we're not successful, then it will be in the following a fiscal budget do you know how much money that roughly that would be for 15 new personnel not off the top of my head i don't okay. um, but i get that to you this week that's thank you chief yeah. yes sir and councilman mayberry if you'll recall i have i have been pretty firm in saying that i don't believe we have the capacity next year for that addition and so we are very hopeful that the safer grant is successful so so we're going to start construction on a fire hall that there's some consternation about if they're going to try to break ground in the fall or the winter yeah everyone i think everyone was aware of the situation well, and I, we're I actually know, we're actually coming, way behind schedule but now it's on. coming to us mm -hmm. and i would assume he needs lead time to hire and train these people i'm going to assume the station would probably be built in six months or less i don't think so that's right. I think it's it's been it's it's quite a station now. I guess, isn't it? It is. Mr. Uh, Cassidy believes it will probably closer to ten months for the station once they break ground around ten months to have it completed. So it just depends on when we break ground. What's going to determine at what point we're going to be looking to have those individuals hired and trained so they'll be prepared to occupy as soon as the station is complete. Okay. Thanks, Chief. Yes, sir. Uh, since I was out of town, I was curious on our uh, firing range, where it's at. We met with uh, the site plan engineer along with the uh, fire and PD, and he's uh, putting together that site plan and Based on that, we we'll, should be able to get some cost estimates on the entire project as a whole, and we can break it up into phases as well. Anyone else have any other business this evening? I did put on your desk um, the uh, notice of intent to execute a contract with Kimley Horn for our disability, um, um, Americans with Disability Act evaluation and transition plan. We had discussed that and appropriated that money some time ago. It's something that we have to do. And the committee met and reviewed and selected a company to do this. And that contract is there. And if you have an opportunity to look at it. Mayor, I just looking over this. And they listed one address on Lot 4 Road. We have three parks there instead of one. So okay. I'm pretty sure all three of them are on there because we, okay. we have three different parks. Yeah. I figured you'd have a question about the Chamber of Commerce being on there. But that's because it's on city property. Yep. Anyone else? Seeing no one else with other business, we'll move to public recognition on non-agenda related items. This is the time of the meeting that people that have items that they'd like to bring to our attention that aren't on the agenda or weren't on the agenda tonight to come forward. At this time, you may do so. I see no one making a motion to come forward, so I will declare public recognition on non-agenda related items closed. And with that, I have a motion to adjourn by Vice Mayor Overton, a second by Councilwoman Love. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, we are adjourned. I thank you all for being here. I hope you have a lovely evening, and we look forward to seeing you again here soon. Have a great night.